Hi, I'm Anthony Threlfall, uh, here to talk to you today about um, the fit-out stage uh, of the School of Architecture for the University of Greenwich. Uh, specifically looking at uh, stakeholder analysis and communication management. Um, so a brief introduction. Um, we're looking at the stakeholders, uh, so we need to think about who they are, um, what uh, they need from uh, you, the project manager, and the project team, um, and what you need from them. Um, and this will be important because uh, this could well affect the programme, so we need to look at how this is going to affect the programme. Um, we need to think about how we're going to communicate uh, with the stakeholders, um, and what levels of communication uh, will be needed with specific groups of stakeholders. Uh, we need to also think about how uh, and when this communication is delivered uh, and how this is going to be planned. So, stakeholder definition. Uh, let's look at that first of all. Um, I've taken this from the uh, Project Management Institute, uh, the PM Bock uh, Guide. Um, and this basically says uh, a stakeholder is anybody that's actively uh, involved in a project um, and whose influences uh, may be positively or negatively affected by the project uh, and importantly who may exert an influence over the project towards deliverables. Um, so stakeholders are really key uh, to the outcomes uh, of our project. So stakeholders, who are they? We need to identify the stakeholders, uh, both internal and external to the project. Uh, then we need to analyse the stakeholders, um, basically uh, looking at uh, how the stakeholders um, fit with the project, um, what their interest is with the project uh, and what effect they can have on the project. Uh, once we've done this, uh, we can then start to plan how we're going to deal with uh, the stakeholders uh, and we can plan how we're going to engage with the stakeholders, how we're going to communicate with them um, and indeed how we're going to mitigate uh, any of the various uh, things that may come out from the stakeholders as the project progresses. So, identification. Um, we need to think about all of the stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier, both internal and external. Um, to do this we can get the project team together um, and start uh, brainstorming uh, to get a, a list together of all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We can also look at the uh, project um, to see who's already involved in the project, uh, you know, stakeholders, architects, um, designers, um, existing contractors that may be moving on to the stage of the project, um, and who's yet to be involved in the project, so some of the fit out subcontractors, the suppliers, um, you know, some of the people like uh, communications, uh, technology, um, that possibly haven't been involved or possibly not to a great extent until now. Uh, we can also look at lessons learned log uh, from previous projects if one exists. Um, and we can look um, from these logs to see if there were previous stakeholders that were overlooked uh, that came to light and caused problems um, and perhaps think about making sure we include them on this project. Um, and we can also ask um, the existing stakeholders um, and stakeholders that we've already identified um, if they've got any stakeholders um, that you know, third party stakeholders to us that will have, have some interest and influence uh, over the project we may need to include. So once we've identified them as I've done here um, we can then start to uh, look at how uh, they'll influence the project. Uh, on, on the list here I've uh, picked a few here, we've got the design team as I mentioned earlier, um, domestics, security, ICT, uh, the neighbours to the site, um, structural engineer, party wall surveyor, Brianne assessor, uh, may be fairly interested, um, and university communications departments, um, be reasonably important for our communications we'll talk about later on. Um, so stakeholder analysis, um, Mendelo, 1991, um, came out with a, a, a matrix which charts uh, importance uh, and influence of the stakeholders. Um, and we'll look at that on the next slide. Um, we need to identify the communication needs uh, of the stakeholders um, and indeed our communication needs back from the stakeholders. 
Um, and we need to look at our relationships with the stakeholders. And again, uh, I'll look at that again on a later slide. We need to assess uh, the impact that stakeholders uh, will have on the property, the, the project, um, and look at the uh, risks uh, that the stakeholders um, may be bringing to the project or risks that may need to be allocated to the stakeholders. So, Mendlow's uh, power interest grid, as I mentioned, um, this charts uh, the level of interest that a stakeholder has against their power uh, or their influence over the project. In the top right hand corner we've got our key players and it says they're managed closely. Uh, these are the people we really, really need to keep on top of because um, they're really important to the project. Um, not only are they highly interested in it, but, but they've got a huge amount of power and influence over the project. Um, conversely, in our bottom left hand corner, we've got people that aren't very interested in the project and can't really do a lot about the project, they've not got a lot of influence. Um, we need to put very little effort into these stakeholders uh, by way of uh, communication. So, uh, I've started to put some of our stakeholders that are already identified uh, onto that grid. So top right hand corner, as I mentioned before, got our design team. Um, they're very interested in the project and very important uh, to it because they've got a, a great amount of influence and power over the project. Bottom right hand corner, um, we've got um, local press, um, RBA, RCS, CIOB. Um, They've got a certain amount of interest in the project, not a huge amount of interest, um, but they, they're not going to change the project. They've not got a huge amount of influence or interest over the project, particularly at this stage. Um, so we don't really need to keep them hugely involved in the project or informed uh, at this point. Um, we talked about stakeholder uh, mapping. Um, and this is where I was talking about our relationships with the stakeholders. Um, we're going to have stakeholders don't get on particularly well with. We've not got a, a wonderful relationship with them, um, but they don't have a huge influence over the project. Um, so it says they don't waste time. We don't need to spend a lot of time on these people improving our relationships with them because it's really not going to change a lot. Um, so there's not a lot of point. Um, over the other side of the graph, we've got people we've got a really good relationship with already, um, but have got a lot of influence over the project. Um, so we've got a Keep working on that uh, positive relationship um, so that we get uh, the right outcomes from these people. Um, at the other end of the scale, we've got people that we've not got a good relationship with, but they're important to us. Um, so we need to think about trying to bring some of the attributes that we've got over here to them. We've got to really work on uh, a positive relationship with these people um, by looking at how it works with the other people at the far end of the scale. Um, and then we fill in the rest of the boxes. Uh, but I won't go through all of those in great detail. So, strategies. Um, who are we going to influence first? Well, we're going to look at our key players again. Um, the design team, uh, the, uh, the contractors. These are the people that um, are really important to us, got a lot of influence and a lot of interest over the project. Um, and these are the people we need to influence first um, to get the right outcomes. Um, how are we going to approach them? Um, well, we're possibly going to look at their history, um, how they performed previously, um, what do we need to do um, where they've had failures, uh, how we're going to mitigate those on our project. Um, so we'll look at their history, their successes and their issues. Um, perhaps think about contractor and design team at this point. Um, they may be coming towards the end uh, of their um, the, the project. Uh, they may be taking off the ball a bit. Um, looking at where the next lot of money is coming from um, and looking at um, other projects rather than keeping an eye on board this one. So we've really got to steer them back on course. Um, timelines. We've already got a project plan. Um, we can start putting some timelines against uh, the project plan in terms of stakeholders, how they fit into the project plan um, and where particular stakeholders start going to be popping up along that project plan. Um, when we're talking to stakeholders, um, we need to listen to stakeholders first. Uh, here we go, get their perspective even if you disagree. We need to really listen to the stakeholders, even if they've got something that doesn't really fit in with the, the project. Um, at least if we've heard what they're saying, we can come back with some reasoned arguments uh, to steer them back in the right direction. Um, and finally, plan, plan, plan. 
uh, we need to uh, look at planning how we're going to deal with these stakeholders um, and uh, really what we're going to do. So risk, I talked about risk earlier uh, from a stakeholder point of view. Um, we can go back to our risk register that we were already developed at the early stages of the project. Start looking at um, which stakeholders uh, have got particular risks assigned against them. Um, any that aren't assigned already, think about which stakeholders um, we may need to assign those risks to. Um, we can communicate these risks to the relevant stakeholders that they're aware of the risks um, and communicate how they need to uh, deal with the risks uh, when they arise. Um, and from that we can set up a reporting strategy so that the stakeholders, once they've taken on board the risks, uh, know how uh, and when to start communication uh, with us uh, about the risks when they start to arise. Uh, we can determine uh, the risk budget we've set aside uh, for each of these various risks and the tolerances and communicate these to the stakeholders um, so that they're aware of, of what to do and the tolerances around the risks that they've got um, and some of the mitigation strategies that have already been put in place. We can identify which particular stakeholders and, and who really is responsible um, for these risks um, and uh, implementing the mitigation strategies um, once they come to light or if they come to light. So we talked about communication a lot um, so we need to start thinking about communication management strategy. Um, from the stakeholder analysis um, we need to start thinking about <coughs> how uh, we're going to communicate with the various stakeholders and how often we're going to communicate with them. Um, different stakeholders will have different needs um, and the communication frequency and types of communication will reflect this. We need to record communications that we have with all the stakeholders um, and we also need to create a communications directory. Um, this is where we're going to list all of the stakeholders to the project. Uh, keep a, a record of all their email addresses, all their telephone numbers, um, so that if we've got a need to communicate with a stakeholder, um, an urgent need to communicate, we've got a central point where all that information will be stored. Uh, we can also start to think about setting deadlines uh, in our strategy. Um, we've got the project plan, we know when things are going to come up on that project plan, so we can set some deadlines when we're going to need to communicate um, with stakeholders, we can put those on the project plan um, so we can see when we need to start communicating with people uh, and also when we need to start receiving communication from uh, the stakeholders. Uh, and as this fit out project progresses, um, the strategy is also going to change uh, and the frequency and the types of communication we have with particular groups as their interest uh, and their influence over the project changes. Um, the stakeholders are going to move around that grid and uh, we're going to start to need to adapt our communication strategy accordingly. Um, we talked about the, the grid again. Um, and here we've put some of the communication methods against the different levels of interest and influence on the grid. So for our key players in the top right hand corner red box, we're going to want to have regular formal and informal meetings uh, with these uh, stakeholders. Yeah, we're going to be communicating with them by email, text, um, and also by telephone. Uh, I talked earlier about uh, telephone communication with people, um, and for recording purposes, uh, I as project manager um, keep a daily log uh, where I write down all the telephone uh, conversations that I've had with people. So I'm going back to this uh, and refer to it if I'm having further conversations with them. Um, and also so I can look at some of the, the deadlines um, that are coming out of this and note these further into my, um, my log. Um, in the bottom left hand corner, um, we've got the people that aren't interested or don't have a lot of influence over the, the uh, project. Um, we're not going to need to have regular formal meetings with these people. Um, really we're just going to be thinking about putting out um, media releases, um, newsletters, um, posting things on the uh, intranet, uh, the internal Greenwich intranet, um, and some information displays for these people. Um, we've also got people down here that have got an interest in the project, quite a good interest in the project, 
that don't have a huge amount of influence or power over the project. We might want to think about taking these people uh, down to site, giving them tours of the site, um, having some um, engagement sessions, sort of publicity sessions where we tell them a bit more about the project face to face. Um, we can also keep these people updated, not, not particularly frequently, but by email, um, again with the internet, um, and possibly sending texts out to these people um, if the need arises. I and mean, that would sort of be medium frequency communication to those people. Um, Timescales and reporting. I, I talked earlier about setting deadlines. When we set deadlines with the um, stakeholders, we we'll communicate these, stakeholders, these deadlines to the stakeholders um, and expect those deadlines to be met. Um, if those deadlines aren't met, we're going to need to think about an education strategy. Um, we're possibly asking for some information back from the stakeholder that we're not getting by the deadline we set. So we put a mitigation strategy in place, <coughs> um, possibly going to another stakeholder who might be able to help with information, or if we've not received information by a particular date um, you know, from an email, mitigation strategy may just be pick up the phone um, and, and chase the uh, stakeholder. But we'll note those deadlines on the project plan <coughs> so we can see if we're missing those deadlines and we need to start doing the mitigation uh, follow-ups. Um, we can also look at um, freezing the design at key stages uh, with the stakeholders um, to avoid scope creep um, and so the stakeholders know um, exactly where they're at. Um, this will also focus the stakeholders to meet some of the deadlines um, so they know that if they don't get the information back to us that we've, we've needed we may miss things that perhaps they wanted to include in the project, and then we're going to be asking them for a, a, a design free sign off. Um, so they, they might be a bit more keen to get the information back to us. We're going to need to report this information um, back to the project board um, so that they can keep tabs and see where the project's going. I talked about um, recording uh, the communications. Uh, we need to keep accurate records of communications, uh, minutes from meetings. Um, emails are also good because it's a, an instant record of all the communication we've had. Um, and as I said, the, the um, daily log uh, that I keep as project manager. Um, we need to set uh, up a, a standard set of documentation uh, and record this somewhere and possibly assign a, a, a person that's going to be responsible uh, for recording and updating this um, communication information. Um, that gives us a central repository that people can then access uh, and we can assign access rights um, to different stakeholders um, so they can go straight to the information if they need it uh, and we can also go to the information uh, and uh, bring that to the forefront uh, with our stakeholders. So in conclusion um, we've looked at identifying the stakeholders to the project. Uh, the stakeholders um, are key to the project critical to the outcomes of our project. So we need to identify all of the stakeholders. Um, once we've identified them, we need to prioritise them, um, thinking about their interest and influence, as we did with Mendelow's Grid. Um, and that will also influence how and when we communicate with the stakeholders. Um, uh, the frequency and type of communication that we have with the stakeholders uh, and the communications that they're going to have uh, back with us uh, so that we meet deadlines that we set through the project, uh, deadlines that we put on the project plan uh, and the overall fit out deadline to the stage of the project. Thank you.